and says, okay, uh, why don't you add this interval point? And if someone does that, uh, you have to make the data structure look, behave as if this was added um, without actually adding these two intervals because you will have a problem. So how do you do that? Um, any ideas? Yeah, so <clears throat> rather than just blindly add this thing, um, first thing you can do is notice that if the left endpoint, in fact, one of the, the things you have to do is implement searching for points, you can notice that the left endpoint is actually inside one of these intervals here. And so that means actually that you can add this thing by just extending this interval until it's, uh, its right end point is, is all the way up here. Now in general it's more complicated than that because more generally the picture could look like this.
super slow. Um, it turns out that the way this is implemented is it computes the size by walking through the whole data structure, uh, counting the number of elements. Um, luckily, usually the only thing you care about is if it's empty, in which case this is what you use. This can be a thing that uh, very often you'll say, you know, that the way you ask if something is empty, you say is it size equal to zero. Uh, that's much less efficient than, than this, in this particular instance. Yeah? Why doesn't it keep track of the size of every other data structure you do? Well, because what it's doing, I mean, this basically got a bunch of stuff in a sort of set. And all you all that happens when you get a tail set is you take a tail set is you get a, a different structure. I don't know, I'll call it TS or tail set that remembers the original set and remembers the value of X. That's all that happens when you get a tail set. And then when you search for things in that structure, well, it'll uh, it'll do obvious things like you know, if the thing you search for is less than x, then it'll search for, uh, it'll actually search for the thing that comes after x rather than other stuff, right? Because x somewhere in this thing appears here. Um, so, you know, so it just does a little bit of pre-filtering before actually just searching in the original structure. But one thing it never does is uh, is go through and count how many elements come after x in the structure. It's just not, not part of building this thing. So building a tail set is really fast. It's just few bit pieces of information and a pointer to the original structure. Um, but the drawback of that is, uh, is that it's, uh, well, it's just that you don't know the size of the thing. Okay? Yeah, so that's the, there's the hints for the assignment interval set is the tricky one. The disjoint interval set is not so tricky. Um, there, the, data, the, the user is never supposed to insert things that, that overlap. <coughs> if they do, you should just detect it and, and not insert it. So there's no, no problem with that. Okay. Any questions about that? Warning, don't ask for the size of the tail set. Uh, it's going to be slow. And the same thing is true if you take a subset or a head set. Uh, all of those are, are slow. Okay. okay, so last class we had left off, it's been like three weeks ago now. Uh, with, with the midterm and the, the reading week. Uh, we were talking about binary trees, and we had mentioned binary search trees. These are the main kinds of binary trees we're interested in this course, although we'll see a couple of other kinds as well. Um, and what I wanted to say is talk a bit about those more, look at the basic binary search tree data structure, and then if we have time, start looking at different kinds of balanced binary search trees today. Um, so a binary search tree, remember, was a binary tree uh, that has this So here's another binary search tree, and let's delete
We stopped at nine because we couldn't continue anymore. So nine has no left child. So nine has only, at most, one child. Maybe there's a child here, maybe not. But that means this is a node that's easy to delete. We know how to delete nodes that have only one child. What we don't know how to do is delete nodes that have two children. So that's what we do. We cut nine out of the tree here, and adopts its, its single child if necessary, and then we put nine in up here. So nine is gone from down here, and it comes in and replaces eight up here. And everything works perfectly still. This is still a nice binary search tree. It still has a binary search tree property, because everything on the left was smaller than eight, and there's no difference between 8 and 9 if you're comparing the stuff on the left. And everything on the right was bigger than 8, and there's no difference then between 8 and 9 if you're only comparing it to this, this stuff on the left. So it looks just like 8. In fact, if you're only doing comparisons with these other elements, there's no way to tell the difference between 8 and 9. Okay? So the strategy for removing a node in the binary search tree is if the node has no children, it's easy. If the node has one child, it's easy. And if the node has two children, well, then you find a substitute for it, which is by going in the right subtree and going left and so you can. You delete that node, which has only one child, and you put it in. So it's not, a, it's not a process that somehow recurses and recurses, because once you find a substitute, you know that this is a node with only one single child. Okay, good. So that's clear. So if it's clear, then tell me what happens if you delete 12. Um, 
over the pig. Something that is 
just the right thing to replace it. And 
everything works perfectly still. This is still a nice binary search tree. It still has the binary search tree property because everything on the left was smaller than 8, and there's no difference between 8 and 9 if you're comparing the stuff on the left, and everything on the right was bigger than 8, and there's no difference then between 8 and 9 if you're only comparing it to this, this stuff on the left. So it looks just like 8. In fact, if you're only doing comparisons with these other elements, there's no way to tell the difference between 8 and 9. Okay? So, the strategy for removing a node in the binary search tree is if the node has no children, it's easy. If the node has one child, it's easy. And if the node has two children, well, then you find a substitute for it, which is by going in the right subtree and going left, and so you can't. You delete that node, which has only one child, and you put it in there. So it's not, a, it's not a process that somehow recurses and recurses because once you find a substitute, you know that this is a node with only one single child. Okay, good. So that's clear. So if it's clear, then tell me what happens if you delete 12.
add all eight to the street. So what happens then? Well, we create a, the first thing we add is one, becomes the root of the street. And then we add two, where does two go? Right. And then we add three, starting at one in the middle, right? Then we have four. And this just goes on. Then we add n. And now if we search for something, in particular if we search for n, uh, we have to basically walk through this whole sort of list here. So not too much, not too impressive. Um, basically, in cases like this, this binary search tree just becomes a sorted list. And uh, a sorted array list would be okay and we could do binary search on it, but it's worse than a sorted link list. Um, so we can't even get to elements quickly because we start at the root and walk through until we, we find them. Um, so really all we can say is that these take a little bit of time. Not very impressive. That's the only thing that we can say is true all the time. Maybe sometimes you get lucky and you create a balance, but often not. Uh, if you want to be, you know, a little more precise, then you can say they take O of H time. Uh, where H is the height of the tree. But H can be uh, equal to M minus one, so nothing. That, that doesn't really change things much. Okay, good. Um, I mean, this couldn't be all of it, right? There's a reason people have been studying minor search trees for the last 70 years. It's not. It's not just this. Um, the real trick is keeping this height here small. And there's lots of ways to do that. And we'll start looking at one of those today. So, so far so good, just basic binary search trees, nice and simple, easy to understand, but uh, useless in practice, um, because they, they get unbalanced like this. And this is a binary search tree, this is what you get. So it's not like it's some uncommon strange case, this is, happens all the time. Um, so, we're going to look at something called scapegoat trees. And uh, it's based on a principle which politicians have known about for since the dawn of politics, I guess, is that. Uh, it's fine if things go wrong as long as you have someone to blame. So, uh, we always need someone to blame. All right. So, let's, uh, let's define these things. So, there are binary search I would just described with a couple of other things. Um, we keep two counters. One of them is n. That's the number of elements in the tree. So, number of nodes in the tree. Another one is q. And q will see is, uh, is always bigger than it is. Thank you. 
So remember logarithms. Uh, they tell you how many times you can, the log of Q tells you how many times you can divide Q by something before it becomes less than or equal to 1. In this case, it's how many times you can divide Q by 1.5 before it becomes less than or equal to 1. Um, so, so that's, uh, that's the height of this thing. And so far, so good. Uh, we know that we can search in this binary search tree in O of H time, where H is the height of the tree. Um, and here, this is saying we're going to keep H small, we're going to keep it log base 3 halves of Q. And, well, what's Q? Q is bigger than or equal to N, and we'll see that it's also less than or equal to 2 times. So, Q and N are almost the same thing. They only differ by a factor of 2. If you take the logarithm of them, uh, that means that this is less than or equal to log with 3 halves of 2 N, which is equal to log with 3 halves N plus log with 3 halves of 2. So just a call. So this is a, some kind of log N plus. Here's how scapegoat trees work. So we know how to search because they're just binary search trees. And, uh, and we know that it's fast. It's always log n prime because the height of the tree is so long. So what we need to figure out is how we can add things and remove things and still maintain this, uh, this problem. I'll start with removal because it's the easiest. I have to remove something from the scapegoat. All right. Um, well, scapegoat tree is just a binary search tree. So we just remove x from the binary search tree as usual. We decrement n. n, so that's n minus minus. All right. And then we're pretty much done. So let's check our things that we need to maintain here. So we need to keep the height of the scapegoat tree. It has to be less than or equal to log base 3 halves of Q. So before we remove this thing, the height was less than or equal to log base 3 halves of Q. Um, after we remove it, did the height increase? So I'll remember the removal first. Does it ever increase the height of the tree? No. The height might decrease because you skip over a node somewhere. But everything else just gets closer to the root. I mean, removing something always ultimately just, uh, just takes uh, a node with only one or zero children out of the tree, which means that other subtree just moves up. Uh, nothing ever gets moved down. So good. This is, uh, doesn't increase the height. Now, did we change the value of Q when we removed it? And there's the code for removing it. Does it change the value of Q? No. So, the height didn't get bigger. Um, Good, and the value of Q didn't change, so the height is still smaller than log base 3 halves of Q. Good. Uh, now, is Q still bigger than N? Bigger than or equal to N? Yeah, N went down, Q didn't change, so that's still okay. 
is Q still less than or equal to 2M? Can happen both ways. Uh, N went down, so that means 2N went down by 2, so now maybe Q is bigger than that. So, in one little thing of fix, if Q is bigger than 2M, then rebuild the whole tree as a complete binary search tree. And then set Q equal to N. So the way to think of this is, what is Q doing? Q is keeping track of the size of the tree would be if we never deleted anything. So um, it'll, it'll keep track of the size of the tree if we never deleted anything. But occasionally, uh, we delete a lot of stuff. And that's when Q is bigger than 2n, meaning that actually um, we've deleted as much stuff as the number of nodes currently in the tree. And when that happens, we just take the whole tree and rebuild it perfectly. It's a perfectly balanced, wonderful binary search tree. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we have this scraggly looking tree here uh, because it's all misshapen. And we just take all its nodes, lay them out in sorted order. You can do that with a red with a in order traversal, and then pick the middle node in that order, the median becomes the root, and then half the nodes go over here, and the other half go over here, uh, minus this, this one here, so this is, and then it's one over two, and then it's one over two. And repeatedly do that on these two sides. So you get a perfect binary search tree that has the minimum height that it could possibly have, and have that many. Clear. So it's a very drastic measure. Right? Something, all that happened was some counter had a value we didn't like, and we took the whole tree and we threw it out and we built it from scratch. All right, good. So it's clear how to remove things. Most of the time it's just a normal removal, but sometimes you just take the whole tree and throw it in the garbage and start off. And it's important to remember when we do that, we now set Q equal to N. So before we had, you know, right? Before we did this, we had Q was bigger than two times N. We do this rebuilding and now Q gets reset to the same value. Um, and then if that happens, well then certainly Q is less than or equal to 2 times N, it's equal to N, and well the height of the tree actually got way smaller probably than it, it was I mean, It didn't get bigger because this is a tree of minimum possible height that has this many nodes. So we still satisfy that. <coughs> uh, all right. So how about if we had something? So, well, this is a binary search tree. So we just add x the usual way. In the binary search tree. Increment n. Now we added 1 to n, and we added uh, 1 to q, because q 
Two still between n and two n? Yeah. Okay. It may be getting you now further away from two n because two n increases by two and we increase n by one. Uh, so and q only increases by one. So it's still less than that uh, and still bigger than original n because they both went up that same. So this is good. Check. Um, all right. That's that's fantastic. Um, what else? The height of the tree. Is it still at most long base three halves of Q? No, what could have happened? Yeah, this, the height might have increased. I mean, we just added X, that could increase the height. So let's, let's see what that looks like. So we have this tree. Before we inserted this thing, we know that if we drew a line here, we measured a log base three halves of Q, uh, starting from the root and down to here, that everything is above this line. Now, one thing is we have increased the value of Q. That works in our favor. So this line move down by a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit. This is the new value of Q. So the line actually moved down because Q increased a little bit. Um, so this is tiny. This is only roughly 1 over Q this goes down. But then we came along and we put it in a dangling below this line. And that's not allowed because the tree is not supposed to be this high. So, we need to fix this. This is where the name scapegoat tree comes from. So what we do is we're going to blame someone for this problem here of x being down this, down two from. There's somebody that is to blame for this. Um, who can we blame? Where do you think there's going to be someone to blame? Well, when children do something bad, who do we blame? Their parents. And their parents then blame their parents, who blame their parents, who blame their parents. So there's a whole cycle of blame going on. It's, it's not my fault, my, my parents were not next to me. And, uh, and so on. There's this vicious cycle. And so that's what we're going to try and do here. We're going to follow this path up to the root. Visiting the parents, the grandparents, the great grandparents, and so on, until we find somebody who's definitely, who definitely needs to be blamed, uh, who definitely you can prove that they're bad, that they did something bad, and uh, and they're going to have to fix this. So, what does that look like? Well, we start at X, and we walk up this path. And for each node on this path, there's some number of nodes in its subtree. So for example, x is just a leaf down here. So this is just a subtree of size 1. But you know, this guy here, this guy has, let's say, three nodes in its subtree. So this is a, a subtree of size 3. And this thing has, I don't know how many nodes in its subtree. Subtree includes the previous. So these things are, are 
going up. And uh, what we'll call a scapegoat. Not nine anymore as one of the one of these items. 
That's clear. Yep. Uh, five over seven is uh, fifteen over uh, over twenty-one, and two over seven. Two over two thirds is uh, is fourteen over twenty-one, right? Yes. Five over seven is good. You're right. So five over seven is the uh, escape over two. Good. Somebody can do basic arithmetic. Um, so the scapegoat here is actually this guy, 5 over 7, <coughs> which is 15 over 21, which is 14 over 21. Sorry. So 7 is the scapegoat. We rebuild the entire tree underneath 7. So it looks like this. Good that we're recording this, so the whole world can now see that I can't do uh, can't do fractions at a grade three level. Uh, <laughs>
the, the height of the tree decreases, all that means is I, uh, I just have to check that, uh, that there is a tree that has this many nodes, which is smaller than this. And that's fairly easy to check. Uh, I mean, remember that this tree is this scraggly looking thing. Uh, we know that it cannot be completely full down to here. Otherwise, it would have, uh, this wouldn't be a scapegoat. This would be a perfectly balanced binary tree. And this thing definitely wouldn't be a scapegoat. So we know that this tree is scraggly looking. There's some gaps in this tree. It's not, it's not a perfect full tree. So that means if we didn't care about this being a binary search tree, just a binary tree, we could take x and stick it somewhere else and its height would be increased. Well, this tree here that we just made is a tree of minimum height that has this many nodes. So its height is not any more than this tree, which, which avoided going below this time. Okay. So, um, so by rebuilding this way, the height of this, this is supposed to be a binary search tree. It has to go in a very specific place. Uh, so instead, we, we do the next best thing, which is just to rebuild the whole tree to make it smaller. Yeah? Um, Okay, so that's a good question. So you say, <clears throat> so let's make sure that this thing is really well defined, and that's probably the last thing we'll do today before we, we analyze this carefully. The question is, well, what if you can't find a scapegoat? What if you walk up this path all the way to the root, and you never found a scapegoat? Well, let's see what that would look like. So that would mean, that if I start at the root, well, I know the size of the root is n, right? And if the previous node on the path up to this root uh, was not a scapegoat, so how big could this sun tree be? Less than or equal to two thirds of n. Otherwise, it would be a scapegoat if it was bigger than two thirds of n. And now, well, okay, so if it's not a scapegoat, that's true. And now, what about this stuff? What can you tell me about its size? Less than or equal to two thirds the size of its parent. So this is less than or equal to two thirds squared. And the next node has size less than or equal to two thirds cube. And this goes on for a while. But this can't go on forever, right? Because eventually, you know, this thing's getting smaller and smaller. Eventually, it's smaller than one. Eventually, this thing would have to get uh, less than uh, Well, how far can this go before it's less than one? Well, what we're doing here is we're repeatedly taking in and we're repeatedly dividing it by 1.5. How many times can we divide n by 1.5 before it becomes smaller than one? So the number of these steps that we could go would be at most log base 1.5 of n. But wait a minute. That's as long as this path could be. But hold on. The reason we did all this is because the path is longer than that. Right. So if there's no scapegoat, this path is only of like long base 3 halves of n. Um, but we know that the path is not of like only long base 3 halves of n because the whole reason that we did this is because we found this node x whose length is bigger than log base 3 halves of q, which is itself bigger than log base 3 halves of n. So it must be that if we start from this node x and walk up, we have to hit escape it. Otherwise, the path couldn't be that long. It's just a proof by contradiction. Clear? So there is definitely a scapegoat because uh, well, because otherwise you, x wouldn't be that, that 
All right. So this is well defined. We, we know how it works. Um, we know how to, we believe that searching something is efficient in this, this kind of binary search tree. Uh, we still have to analyze, and it's going to be an advertised analysis that we're going to do. How much does it really cost us to rebuild these subtrees, and how much does it really cost us to rebuild the whole thing? That's for next slide. Oh, <laughs> 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 